In 639 BCE, Josiah, king of Judah, is known to have introduced wide-ranging religious reforms and brought additional areas of Israel under his control. It is during this period that polemics against an inversion of a wide variety of religious and cultural sources are brought together to form a religious and political unity. For Josiah's inquisitors, where history is unheroic, such as the expulsion from Egypt in the form of the Hyksos, history is inverted. Where religion is bereft of moral unity, the cult of Aten is interweaved satisfying existing belief systems within the region and bestowing upon the king, Josiah, the position of divine right, through a lineage to Solomon and David, both replacements for Aten's ancestors and his temple-building reputation. Josiah also destroys the Tophet temple, said to have been built by Solomon in the Hinnon Valley, just outside Jerusalem, to the south. Within this unifying mechanism, there are obfuscations to mitigate existing belief systems, which require the true name of God, to be kept secret, and for which there is precedence in the cult of Baal and Ishkur, all part of the mishmash of the region, and all designed to plaster over the holes in the new Yahweh-based system. An important separation of the identities of Baal Moloch Yahweh is implemented, Although the evolution of Ishkur to Hadad Baal to Yahweh does not remain disguised owing to the later polemic against Babylon written up as Genesis, which as we've discussed previously is the Reader's Digest condensed version of the much larger Sumerian creation epic. Well known in Egypt, including at the time of the ancient cult, was the following passage. From the Book of the Dead I have not robbed. I have not coveted. I have not killed people. I have not told lies. I have not trespassed. I have not committed adultery. I have not cursed a God. Josiah's unification process takes Moses, an ideogram combining the Amos who expelled the Hyksos, and the Mermos who led the Egyptian army to great victories, and credits him with receiving the Ten Commandments in tablets of stone. In reality these laws are an elaboration of the above declaration. Add to this the fact that the obscure Egyptian king's hymn to Aten is almost word for word Psalm 104 in the Bible and we have another compelling coincidence. Josiah's unification should of course be applauded. It outlawed the Moloch cult and emphasized the spiritual morality of the Ten Commandments. The polemics and inversions adding a heroic slant to the history of his people are understandable and politically astute. But beginning c. 200 CE, somewhere along the line, and unlike the ancient cult, supremacy of race is added to the Jewish faith. In summary, however, it is Herzog's discovery of Yahweh's consort Asherah in Jewish texts and his declaration of an archaeological absence of Solomon or David, that is the scalpel with which to slice through all the fictions of the biblical exodus and its suggestion of divine right and supremacy. For that reason, Herzog must not be forgotten. Even though his scholarship is ignored by the politics of modern-day Israel, it contains a lesson for the rest of the world, and in particular for those nations who support Israel's supremacist doctrines. Israel, Modem, has no divine right to the land it occupies. Given the religious and cultural battleground upon which Israel is placed, its absence of recognition of modern reality, and in a world armed with nuclear weapons, until Israel armed with those weapons, separates itself from doctrines of divine right and racial supremacy, it will continue to be the breeding ground for a fight against racial and political injustice, at the center of the modern day world's geopolitical processes which is leading our entire species to destruction.